Thank you. Well, a warm welcome to everybody, and especially to all our guests. Um, just a few household things. In accordance with the openness of Local Bodies Regulations 2014, this meeting is being live streamed and may otherwise be recorded, filmed or com communicated on other media platforms. The recording of this meeting will be made available on the Council's YouTube channel shortly after the meeting. Both councillors and officers in attendance are reminded to make full use of and to speak clearly into the microphones available at all times. A reminder that mobile phones should be turned off or put on silent mode. Those present at the meeting should refrain from taking telephone calls. Thank you. Um, agenda item two, apologies for absence. Thank you, Worship. Apologies received from Councillor Eaton, Councillor Richard Mice, Councillor Sharon Mice, Councillor Koslowski, Councillor Joshi, Councillor Gotteraya, and Councillor Darling. Thank you. Uh, agenda number three, declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest? No, thank you. Agenda item four, Mayor's announcement. Uh, there are no Mayor's an announcements. Um, it is now my great pleasure to call upon Councillor Linda Broadley. Uh, this is the Mayor's Award. Um, the award goes to South Leicestershire Lit Little Wombles, um, who do an absolute sterling job in the borough. Um, and Councillor Linda Broadley is going to tell us a little bit about the South Leicestershire Litter Wombles. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'm delighted that this year's Mayor's Award goes to the South Leicestershire Litter Wombles. The difference that they make is tremendous and is most appreciated by councillors and the council. These are all people who give up their own time to work either on their own or in a group with the aim of ridding society of dropping litter and to raise awareness of the danger to the wildlife that dropped litter can cause. <coughs> the group not only go into schools and give talks to children to encourage them to dispose of litter correctly, they talk to businesses on the need to keep their sites free of litter and the need to recycle, uh, as I know that the group sort out all the recycling when they're collecting the uh, litter, uh, which in itself is great for the environment, with less going into landfill. During April, the Wiggy Wombles collected 353 bags of litter from Wigston alone. That's not including the amount that the Oakley Wombles collected. Myself and Frank went out on a group pick on Saturday in South Wigston and we were made very welcome. I was astonished to see the amount of discarded rubbish shoved into hedges and in the undergrowth. Scott, who works full time, often goes out twice a day really opened our eyes to the work that they, as a group, achieved. It was a very enjoyable experience, especially seeing Frank under the hedge of Bennett Way on his hands and knees, <laughs> and knowing that we were making a small difference. There were 12 of us that day, um, and we collected 44 bags, plus lots of recycling, two shopping trolleys, a baby car seat, and some uh, traffic cones. Scott did warn us that it becomes addictive, and it's true, we now see rubbish that has been dropped everywhere. And since being out, we've collected, well, we've been out since collecting, although not as much as a lot of the others. I mentioned Scott by name, sitting behind me, um, because he is the one that I had contact with. But as I'm sure he will agree, he's one of many who do a great job. I would encourage everybody to join in and to give it a go, as this is community engagement at its best. So I will finish by saying thank you to the group and well done on your award. You all certainly deserve it. Thank you, Councillor Linda Broadley. Would the Wombles like to come up and just receive a certificate? <laughs>
Good evening. I'm going to talk a couple more. Um, right, agenda item six. Uh, this is my bit, I believe. Okay. Tonight is Councillor Rosemary Adams' night, but before, um, be, uh, before hopefully you are elected, I'm sure you will be. <laughs> and I hand over the chain of office. I would just like to tell you what an honour, honour and privilege it has been to be the mayor of, borough, of the borough of Obi and Wigston. At the beginning of my term, it was a bit bumpy because, unfortunately, any events that had been planned ended up being either postponed or cancelled due to the virus. Things started livening up a bit about six months ago, so I was able to catch up with lost time. My journey as mayor involved me in all totally different events and activities, and I can honestly say that I do not have a favourite one. All events were so different, from bestowing the freedom of the borough to the University of Leicester, to a simple but very enjoyable tea party that was put on by my neighbours for my charity. I engaged with so many people doing so much good work within our borough and county-wide. My charity this year was Leicester Children's Hospital Appeal. Unfortunately, a lot of charities suffered during the restricted times and mine was one of them, but I did manage to reach a four-figure sum, and as they say, something is better than nothing. I hope my legacy has been to have represented this lovely borough of Odeon Wigston in a right and proper fashion, and encourage young people that they can also be mayor, because if it was possible for me, it's possible for anyone. I cannot finish without saying a few thank yous. I'm so grateful to my Deputy Mayor, Councillor Rosemary Adams, when she gallantly stepped into the chair for me at a difficult meeting whilst I was in my sick bed. I would like to also thank my chaplain, Rabbi Mark Solomon. My gratitude also goes to the senior lead team and officers who guided me very gently but firmly when I chaired meetings. And I must mention my two administrators who kept me on the straight and narrow, Nicola Ruff and Joanne Smith. We had some fun together because all three of us were on a bit of a learning curve, but we got there in the end. Um, Nick and Joe, you there, would you like to come up? Come up. Oh, you've got a long way to walk, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll meet you halfway. <laughs> Oh, now then, Geoffrey, my husband and consort, he was very patient with me and when things had gone not quite to plan. And while I was having a hissy fit, he remained very calm. There was a different Geoffrey from how you know him. <laughs> Geoffrey was even forced to wear suits, and I'm pleased that he did, because with suits come lots of pockets that were invariably filled with my speech, bits of useful paperwork, but most importantly, lipstick. Uh, Jeffrey, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for guiding and steering me. You made the perfect road manager. So I'm so excited for Rosie, and she will make an excellent mayor for 22-23, in true Rosie Adams style. And let me tell you, Rosie, 
with your mirror position comes the best parking space in the building. <laughs> Thank you for listening to me, and I'll now let the evening progress. Thank you. Uh, agenda number seven, appreciations. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, it, it's um, quite some time since I uh, started doing these appreciations for outgoing mayors. Um, and normally, they're about money. Normally, they're about how well somebody's done in terms of raising money for charity. And in a sense, that's good. But sometimes we forget the actual role of the mayor is to represent the borough and is to be the public face and also um, to chair these meetings. And can I say to Lily, thank you. This time, after Linda Eaton, who did a superb job for two years through the start of Pandelli. Lily has done a wonderful job in getting this and guiding this authority out to the other side. Um, chairing meetings, and certainly chairing meetings which have some degree of hybridity, there's a word I've just invented, um, is not easy. And it is something that many people will now have to follow in her footsteps. So can I, from the council, thank her not just for being mayor, but being mayor in a way which was superb and got us out of this pandemic and onto a much level of footing. And Rosemary, thank you for being deputy, but you've got a good act to follow. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much for your kind words. Um, now we get to the really good bit, agenda item eight. Um, I shall now ask for nominations for the office, office of Mayor for the ensuing year. Uh, Councillor Linda Gordley. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'm delighted to propose Councillor Rosemary Adams for the position of Mayor. Rosemary became a councillor in 2019 after having gained a lot of experience when her husband was also a borough councillor. Rosemary has lived in the borough for over 40 years so is well placed to represent the residents as the mayor. Becoming first citizen of the borough is an honour, and I'm sure Rosemary will carry out the duties involved with the same dedication that she gives to her role as councillor. So I'm delighted to propose Councillor Rosemary Adam as mayor. Thank you, Councillor Broadley. Um, I will second it um, and just say what a fantastic deputy she was, and I'm sure She'll have a wonderful year. Um, so it's been proposed by Councillor Linda Broadley, seconded by me, uh, that Councillor Rosemary Adams be elected to the Office of Mayor for the ensuing year. Can we now put it to the vote? A show of hands, please. Unanimous. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I now call upon the newly elected mayor to read and sign the declaration of acceptance of office. I, Rosemary H. Adams, having been elected to the office of mayor of the Oadby and Wixton Borough Council, declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. I undertake to observe the code as to the conduct which is expected of members of the Oadby and Wigston Borough Council.
Right, let's close that off. Can I have a picture of that, please? Just rest your hands up. I do my bit now. Okay, I hope I've got this right. I would like to welcome the aldermen, past mayors, council officers, my family, friends and my chaplain and representatives of my chosen charity. Firstly, I would like to thank Councillor Linda Broadley and Councillor Lily Kaufman for proposing and seconding me, and to the councillors who have voted for me, and also to the officers who have helped me in preparation for this role. Thank you especially to Lily and Geoffrey in their support, advice and understanding during the last 12 months, and I sincerely hope that I can continue the good work that they have done within the borough, and I look forward to Geoffrey being my deputy. We have a gift for you. <laughs> have it from your lady exactly what you want. Oh, right. There it is, isn't there? There's something else in there, brother, Thank you. For all your, for your support. <laughs> My final thanks must go to my consort, Paul, who has shown what a good friend he is, not only by supporting both my late husband and I during Dick's illness and recent passing, but by promising my husband that he would take his place at my side as my consort during my year as mayor. I'm sure, Paul, that wherever he may be, we will hear Dick giving his opinion on everything we undertake. <laughs> You all know him too well. Uh, I am honoured to be mayor and will do my best to get Obi and Wigston on the map for lots of positive reasons. And I am sure I can count on my fellow councillors for their help in this. Right, Reverend Ivan Bennett, who's over in the corner there, who is my minister of the church that I attend, the Ecumenical Church of the Nativity in Leicester, a joint Anglican and Methodist church, will be my chaplain for the year. And I thank you for that, Ivan. And my chosen charity is Voluntary Action South Leicestershire, an organisation that was invaluable to me as a carer, from their carer's information pack to the regular telephone calls where I was able to rant, rave, cry and gain strength to face the next day and all its challenges. And I cannot thank you enough for that. And I have every respect for carers. And Kerry and Elaine will speak towards the end of the meeting on, on the uh, charity. <laughs> Thank you. Hmm? Oh, yes, and Paul, would you like to come and... Uh... <laughs> James, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, yes. Come on, come on over here. And uh, here you go. Here you go. Thank you for everything. That's not a photograph, ladies. Just lower us a little bit. 
sei quanto é vai isso, né? <risos> Esse chat provavelmente está fazendo bem bom demais. Ah, 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 aqui? Okay, now we go on to this. Agenda item nine. Okay, we now have agenda item nine. Can I ask for nominations for the election of the incoming deputy mayor for the municipal year 2022 to 2023? I shall now ask for nominations for the office of deputy mayor for the ensuing year. Have we got a proposer? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I would like to propose Councillor Geoffrey Corkman to be the deputy mayor for the forthcoming year. I have known Geoffrey for over 12 years and known of him for a much longer time as a well-respected local councillor who is a passionate advocate for his residents. We first met at OP Community Stakeholders Forum, which is made up of people from community, voluntary and statutory groups who meet approximately five times a year and network together to build community within Oadby. Geoffrey was a founder member of this group and continues to serve on its executive. This service is indicative of his role as an active community leader. For many years, Geoffrey was an active member of the multicultural group and continues to promote activities which bring together the various cultural and faith groups within the borough, including the annual Holocaust Memorial event. I'm sure that our outgoing mayor will testify as to how supportive Geoffrey has been at civic events during the past year, as she already has done. I can also testify to Geoffrey's support during my year as mayor in 2018-19. Um, so in summary, I believe that Geoffrey has all the qualities to be an excellent ambassador for the council. So may I conclude by nominating Geoffrey Corkman as Deputy Mayor for 2022-23. Thank you. And have we got a seconder, please? Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Your Worship, as a council, earlier on this year, we made a commitment to increase our recycling. This appointment is a prime example of that. I'm honoured. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honoured and delighted to second the nomination for Councillor Corkman for the position of Deputy Mayor. And I'm sure it goes without saying that Councillor Corkman will be an excellent ambassador for the borough and a great sport for Councillor Adams as the Mayor. Thank you, Your Worship. It has been proposed by Councillor David Carter and seconded by Councillor Samit Hack that Councillor Geoffrey Corkman be elected to the office of Deputy Mayor for the ensuing year. Can we put it now to the vote? All those in favour? No objections, no abstentions. Thank you. It's passed. Thank you. Now I call upon the newly elected Deputy Mayor to read and sign the Declaration of Acceptance of Office. I, Geoffrey Kaufman, Having been elected to the office of Deputy Mayor of the Obi and Wigston Borough Council, declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. I undertake to observe the code as in the code as in the conduct which is expected of members of the Obi and Wigston Borough Council. Just sign it down, please. Right, please, I'm sorry. And you can hear the change of contact with Crip Sheet. Can I have a picture? Now you're 
Your Worship, I have the pleasure on behalf of the Council of thanking you for your services as Deputy Mayor. But unusually, I can tell you that I know how well you've done it because I've had a close position and watched you the way you saw Lily during the year. And if I can be at least the same support as you were to Lily, to you during your year of office, it will give me great pleasure. Thank you. I think you will make a tremendous mayor. Thank you. And I do welcome you to this office. And I do thank my proposer and seconder and members of the council who have given your support to me uh, as a recycled mayor, third time recycled deputy mayor. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I think uh, the Deputy Mayor forgot to mention that his wife is going to be his consul. I forgot to mention that. Because the consul. Can I come on? Shall we meet halfway? He'd obviously quickly tested Wait till I get you the investment. Can I fit over your head? It's all right. 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 <laughs> That's good. Um, nice baby. Thank you. 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 Thank Okay, agenda item 10, the appointment of council bodies and membership sizes 2022-23. I'd like to invite the Head of Law and Democracy, Dave, to present the report. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the purpose of the report is to appoint the committees, subcommittees, boards, panels, forums and working groups in the council, otherwise known as council bodies, and the number of members to serve thereon for the ensuing municipal year of 2022-23. In summary, in accordance with the Council's constitution, the Council must, at its annual general meeting, appoint all the Council bodies it considers appropriate to deal with matters which are not reserved to the Council, as set out in Part 3 of the Constitution, including the fixed number of members to serve thereon for each municipal year. The recommendations are set out at A and B uh, on page 4 of uh, the agenda, Your Worship, and I have to take any questions. Move. 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 Okay, Councillor Boyce has moved it. Can we have a second, please? Second. Okay, Councillor Carter. Okay. Any speakers? Okay. Have we got any any speakers? Anybody to say anything? No. No. So can Move we the vote. Move the vote. accept? Does it go to the vote? Yep. Okay. All in favour? That's done. Thank you. That's done. That's unanimous. One. Okay. Okay. Unanimous. We move then to Agenda 11, the appointment of office holders and members to council and outside bodies 2022 to 23. And again, we invite hey, Mr. Ball. Oh, it's Mr. Ball, is it? Yes. Thank you, Worship. As prepared for this report, it will put the office holders of the council and the chairs, vice chairs, and members to 
serve on the committees, subcommittees, boards, panels, forums, and working groups of the council, otherwise known as council bodies, for the municipal year 2022-23. The current political balance of the council and the proportionality arrangements as a result thereof in terms of the minimum eligible member representation allocation of seats on those bodies is reflected in the number of appointments to be made by the political group. The recommendations are set out at page 9 at A and B. Since the publication of this report, uh, Councillor Joshi has now withdrawn her nomination for the OB Residence Board of Chair, and Councillor Carter has been further appointed to be the nominee onto the University of Leicester Botanic Garden Board. Unless members have any questions, thank you. Hello. Can we have a seconder, please? A seconder. Thank you, Kevin. Okay. This has been moved by Councillor Boyce and seconded by Councillor Oidle that the recommendations be approved on block. All those in favour? <coughs> okay, and that's you now. Yeah. Yep. And then is it you the next? Item 12. Item 12. Item 12. Oh, the schedule of Council and Allied meetings 2022-23. And we invite Samuel Bourne again to present the report. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, this report seeks council approval of the schedule of council and allied meetings for the municipal year 2022-23. The schedule has been prepared following consultation with the leader of the council and the council senior leadership team, uh, subject to the mentioned guidance at paragraph 3.2 of the report. The recommendation is set out at page 23. Unless there are any questions, thank you, Your Worship. Councillor Broadley. Thank you, Worship. Yes, just on page 22, not in the Conservative figures, it's 23, 26, 88%, which is exactly the same as the Liberal Democrat. 12% and 3 stroke 26. Yes, it should be. That's right. Okay. Yeah, that's the first previous report, and that's just the small admin will get that correct. Well, thank you for bringing it to our attention, Councillor Can we have a mover? Move. Move. John Boyce again. And a seconder? Second. Okay, so John Boyce has, has moved and Councillor Linda Broadley has seconded. Can we put it to the vote again? All for? Yep, yeah, yeah. unanimous. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've not got really many announcements to say, but I would like the councillors please help support me. This was, as you all know, I'm very timid and don't say a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you can help us, let, let's get Obi and Wigston back on the map for all the positive reasons. Let's go out there and, and do whatever it takes. Um, and that's all I need to say on that. Um, but I'd like to introduce now um, Kerry and Elaine, who will speak very shortly um, regarding the, count, the charity that I have selected. And they will be in the corner afterwards when we're having our fish and chips. So if you'd like to <coughs> stand and say a few words, please. Thank you. I do apologise for those. <laughs> so good evening everybody, my name is Kerry Turnhall, I'm the Support Carers Manager for Council and this is my colleague Elaine from the Support Carers team. We're very honoured and I'm very delighted to be here to be the chosen charity. Um, so I just want to tell you a little bit about Vassal, which stands for Voluntary Action Sally Westerfield. We are a small charity, we make up 19 people that are employed in our charity. So we cover a range of different projects helping people in the community. So we've got a social class scheme that's run by volunteers that help those people that are not able to use any public transport to be able to get to things that are uh, hospital appointments, hospital appointments, <laughs> places of interest, and even shopping, and things like that. Also through the pandemic is what that car transport scheme also helped out with, was free parcels, and still currently works with the food bank. We also have a community champions project 
which is those that are over the age of 60 that are socially isolated and lonely. So we have a large team of volunteers that go out and have, you know, attend community gatherings and just to make those people feel less isolated. Lots of lovely green teas. We do a lot there. Uh, then we also have a pen pal writing letters. They also do digital side of things that also help those people to get connected online. We have also a mental health project that deals with low level mental health. Those people that are ready to engage back into the community, we help them. Uh, we've also got a young carers project um, that we offer for those that are caring for somebody like a mother or a father or a sibling. And we've also got support for carers, which is ourselves. So, our service for support for carers, we do cover the whole of the county of Leicestershire. We are commissioned by the local authority. We heavily rely on volunteers as well throughout all of our projects within Basel and um, just to offer that wraparound support. So, currently, we have 396 carers that we're currently providing support to in the OB Wixon. And the official total for today's date is 4,872 carers that we are currently supporting within Leicestershire. When I say a carer, I mean if somebody that's caring for a loved one, a family member, a friend, a neighbour, that's providing that unpaid support. So we have a team at the office, and Elaine's one of the many teams that we've got, that we have the telephone advice and advice. It's key that we have that for carers, that the carers can speak to somebody, not necessarily to the one who speaks to their own family or friends about their situation, but it's very key that they talk to somebody that understands. And we tailor that support. We never close the case, we meet the carer the whole way through their journey. And as you quite well know, some of the conditions that people care for can go on for a long, long time. So we're there every step of the way. We've also got carers groups that we have around the county. We've got one down at the Salvation Army that we run once a month. And our carers event is being held in open weeks for the Salvation Army Salvation. So yes, yeah, so if anyone's got any questions or anything like that, then come and see us at the back. And on a final note, if any of you have got those little things in your wallet that, that are purple or blue or whatever, um, you know, that you don't use cash anymore, I'm sure it would be very welcome in their charity box. So all I've got to do now is say, you're all welcome to the fish and chip supper, which again is typical Rosemary style. Um, and I want to close the meeting and thank you all for coming. <laughs>